Deadpool and Wolverine shatters box office records in one of biggest openings ever. Marvel's Deadpool and Wolverine netted $205 million at the box office in its debut weekend in North America, securing a spot in the top 10 openings of all time. The comic book movie, starring Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman, shattered the opening record for an R-rated film where under 17s must be accompanied by an adult. The title had previously been held by the first Deadpool, which racked up $132 million. When combined with takings from international markets, the film is looking at a global opening of more than $438.3 million. In the top domestic opening weekends ever, Deadpool and Wolverine is seated in eighth place between The Avengers $207.4 million and Black Panther $202 million, pushing Avengers Age of Ultron $191.3 million out of the top 10. It is the second straight hit for Disney following the animated Pixar movie Inside Out 2 which saw returns of $154.2 million on its June debut. The films have helped cinema chains such as AMC Entertainment, Cineworld and Cinemark that have wrestled with a thin film slate in 2024. Several major titles were delayed because of strikes last year by Hollywood actors and writers. The top domestic opening of all time still firmly belongs to Avengers, Endgame with $357.1 million. It is followed by Spider-Man, No Way Home $260.1 million, Avengers, Infinity War $257.6 million, Star Wars, The Force Awakens $247.9 million and Star Wars, The Last Jedi $220 million. Internet goes wild over pommel horse guy at Paris Olympics. A Team USA gymnast dubbed the Clark Kent of the pommel horse and pommel horse guy is vying for a place as the internet's favorite Olympian. Steven Nadorosik qualified for the Olympic team solely on the strength of his pommel horse routine and helped the men's gymnastics team secure their first medal in 16 years. But before the 25-year-old got on the pommel, he spent nearly three hours sitting on the sidelines where he captured the hearts of viewers. After his routine for which he whipped off his glasses, he was quickly labeled Mr. Pommel Horse on social media. His girlfriend Tess McCracken told she has been loving the memes. As well as comparing him to Clark Kent, Superman's bespectacled alter ego, people have joked his job is pommel horse and nod to the Barbie movie, in which Ken's job is described as beach and called him the team's baby girl, a term that can variously mean cute, brooding or an anti-hero. Blowing up on the internet has been such an unexpected side effect of this whole adventure, told Ms. McCracken. He thought the Clark Kent comments were an awesome comparison. I will definitely take that. In a way, it is kind of like that. You know, I'm a goofy guy with the glasses on, but as soon as I take them off, I'm locked in. I'm ready to go. I don't even really see when I'm doing my gymnastics, he said. It's all in the hands. I can feel everything. Mass Food Poisoning Hots TikTok HQ Staff Dozens of workers at TikTok owner ByteDance office in Singapore have fallen ill in a mass food poisoning incident. At least 60 people developed gastroenteritis symptoms which include cramps, diarrhea and vomiting with 57 of them seeking hospital treatment. 17 ambulances, fire engines, a mass decontamination vehicle and Singapore Civil Defense Force were sent to the ByteDance offices, the Straits Times reported. ByteDance uses external suppliers in its office canteen and no food is prepared on site. ByteDance was founded in China but has its headquarters in Singapore. We are investigating the matter and are working with the relevant authorities on this. We take the health and safety of our employees very seriously, told a ByteDance spokesperson. They added the company had taken immediate steps to support all affected employees, including working with emergency services to provide care. 
The Singapore Food Agency and Ministry of Health said they were investigating suspected gastroenteritis cases on Tuesday. As of August 7, 2024, 60 individuals were reported to have developed gastroenteritis symptoms, of whom 57 have sought medical attention in hospitals, the statement said. Jennifer Garner Trapped in Lift at Comic-Con Event Actress Jennifer Garner has revealed she was stuck in a lift for more than an hour as she attended her first San Diego Comic-Con. The 52-year-old recently reprised her role as martial arts-trained assassin Electra Nachios in a cameo in Deadpool and Wolverine. She posted multiple videos about her lift ordeal on Instagram with the caption, Baby's First Comic Con, a short story. The timing of the footage is unclear, but Garner attended the Comic-Con panel for Deadpool and Wolverine earlier in the week. At two minutes, Garner said, Hey guys, we're stuck on this elevator. I could use a Wolverine, I could use a Deadpool. I could use someone, we're looking for stairs. Thanks for having us here. My first Comic Con. Bye for now. At 11 minutes in, she said she was getting toasty and schwitzing, a word for sweating, in the cramped space. When she posted a video from 45 minutes trapped in the lift, she began singing the children's counting verse 99 bottles of beer. By the one hour mark, she was quietly reciting the Madonna hit Like a Prayer, which is part of the soundtrack in Deadpool and Wolverine. Still smiling, Garner then showed her rescue at 1 hour and 12 minutes, and cheered as the doors were forcefully opened by firefighters. Garner first played Elektra, who uses the Okinawan Sai weapon, more than 20 years ago in the 2003 film Daredevil, opposite her former husband Ben Affleck. She returned to the role in the 2005 film Electra, which was poorly received by critics. <laughs> Katie Price reacts to arrest warrant insisting she is away filming a documentary. Katie Price has explained why she failed to appear in court for a bankruptcy hearing resulting in a warrant for her arrest. The former Glamour model insisted she was not running from matters and posted a statement on Instagram saying she could not attend because she was filming abroad. On Tuesday, Insolvency and Company's court judge Catherine Burton issued an arrest warrant for the 46-year-old, saying that she had very clear warnings that she must appear. In April, she was also told she could be arrested if she kept missing hearings. Price was due to face questions about her finances from barristers she was declared bankrupt in November 2019 and again in March this year. In a lengthy post online, Price claimed the media was trying to cause continued humiliation to myself and family but was neither embarrassed or ashamed adding that, I have to continue in my work in order to satisfy these bankruptcy orders. Price also posted a video promoting a clinic in Istanbul where she was filming a documentary on corrective surgeries and suggested she would be undergoing treatment. Issuing the arrest warrant on Tuesday, Judge Burton said Price had not explained her absence and that she has no real excuse, adding, the reason for her absence today is irrelevant. Judge Burton also said Price had offered only piecemeal cooperation and failed to provide the most basic information in relation to her bankruptcies. The former Glamour model insisted she was doing the best to rectify things during extremely challenging times. At a hearing in February, she was ordered to pay 40% of her monthly income from the adult entertainment website OnlyFans to the trustee for the next three years, in relation to her first bankruptcy. She was then declared bankrupt for a second time in March due to an unpaid tax bill worth more than $964,000. Last October, she said she was fed up with being threatened with legal action and would go to prison to be done with it all. <laughs> Princess Leia's Star Wars bikini costume sold as Starfighter miniature goes for $1.5 million. 
a gold bikini-style costume which Hollywood actress Carrie Fisher wore in the Star Wars movie franchise has sold at auction for $175,000. Fisher's character Princess Leia donned the famous garment as she was chained to Jabba the Hutt's throne in the 1983 film episode 6 Return of the Jedi. Crime boss Jabba captured Leia after she tried to rescue Han Solo, played by Harrison Ford. Leia went on to strangle slug-like creature Jabba with the chain which had been around her neck. Meanwhile, a miniature of a Y-wing starfighter ship, flown by Gold Leader, who helped Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill, in a mission to destroy the Death Star in 1977's Star Wars, Episode 4 A New Hope, went for $1.55 million after a bidding war. The Y-Wing is one of just two hero, meaning that it was used in close-ups, Y-Wing filming miniatures built by the Industrial Light and Magic Visual Effects team. It's never seen daylight, said Heritage Auctions on X. The basic design came from Colin Cantwell, according to the auctioneer's website. It was based on a rough description from director George Lucas. Lucas felt the need to create distinct shapes so that the audience could immediately tell whether a ship was a good guy or a bad guy, the website read. It added the miniature measured 27.5 inches by 14.5 inches by 4.5 inches and was made of resin, vacuum form styrene, acrylic, and metal components over an aluminum internal armature, with five mounting points, expertly painted and finished as a battle distress spacecraft. The Leia costume, including hip rings and bracelets, was dubbed one of the most memorable costumes in film history by Heritage Auctions. It was in the same collection as the miniature and was sold in Dallas on Friday. Fisher spoke about wearing the bikini in 2015, when she revealed she questioned Lucas about the outfit, which she said made her vulnerable to the occasional wardrobe malfunction. But she also explained she enjoyed using the chain to kill Jabba, saying, they asked me if I wanted my stunt double to kill him, but I wanted to. I sawed his neck off with that chain. I really wanted to kill him, she told the Daily Beast. She said that she was somewhat proud of how she looked in the bikini outfit, but she also explained, I have serious body dysmorphia issues. Fisher was open about her battles with drink and drugs as well as dealing with mental illness. She died aged 60 in Los Angeles in December 2016.